Everybody, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. How are you? It is Tuesday and it's going to be a terrific Tuesday despite the subject that we're going to talk about today. Uh, and I need to figure out, <laughs> I, I need to figure out how do I put this in context for you to deal with and to understand the importance of what we're going to talk about without really trying to influence the way that you feel or think about this. This is very important because the subject I'm going to talk about this morning is about a nine-year-old boy in Illinois who burnt his family's house down. A nine-year-old boy and his mother insists that he's not a monster. She says that he's not a monster. He's uh, nothing wrong with him. He's, you know, just misguided and made a mistake and everyone deserves a second chance. So I'm just going to let you sit and think about that for just a second. And there were people inside the home and he knew that there were three babies inside the home and he knew that. And yet he burns the house down. And just a few weeks before that, this child had been diagnosed with schizophrenia at nine, a bit early. So I'm going to read you some statistics that I came across that I thought I'd share with you. Uh, in 2018, 62 juveniles in the U.S. under the age of 15 were charged with murder and non-negligent manslaughter. The previous year it was 59. So I'm going to read that one more time. In 2018, 62 juveniles in the United States under the age of 15 were charged with murder and non-negligent manslaughter. I just want you to sit there for a minute and think about that. What does this tell us about the mind of a child that intentionally, who intentionally sets a fire? So here's what happened around this case. He set a fire to their mobile home in Illinois, right? There were five people in the home, including three babies. He's been charged with aggravated arson, which means that he knew that there were people in the home at the time of the fire right? He's faced with five years of probation, but he will be out. He'll be done with this by the time he's 21. So he's not going to get any jail time, but they do recommend counseling and therapy. Even though he started the fire intentionally. So I, I, I want to put this into context because I saw a picture of the kid. Now you, you know, you can't judge from looking at a picture, but his mother insists that her son is not a monster. I kid you not. The mother is insisting that the son is not a monster. And my thing is, why are you defending him? Why, why, why do you think that he, sh he should be? Uh, it, the, the problem we're having with this is that too often in our society, that there's this disconnect in, in our society that we want to penalize some kids. And then we don't want to penalize others. It's kind of like we want to play hopscotch. So we look at one child and if they're white, we're not going to penalize them. We're going to say that, no, he's just misguided. He probably just needs to be retaught. There's nothing really wrong with him. He's just a misguided kid. But if he's black, throw him and throw the book at him and throw him in jail and screw the consequences if he comes out and is a, is a first time or third time for, is a lifelong felon. We want to pick and choose. Now you need to, I need somebody to explain to me, and I'm going to have a psychologist later on, on the late, later on in this week, who is going to talk to us about what goes on in the mind of a nine-year-old boy, whom to me should be watching Five Nights at Freddy's. That's what I think you should be watching. YouTube kids, Five Nights at Freddy's. And instead of that, he's planning to intentionally burn the house down with people inside. As for me, I'm glad my children are grown, right? They're grown. I am not going to have small children around me ever again. Do you remember some time ago earlier this year when there was this bot circling on circulating on YouTube that was telling children how to kill their parents? I am not having small children again. I'm so glad that's over for me. I'm, I'm so glad I'm never doing that again because I cannot afford for my small child to be influenced by other persons and other things outside of me. Now check this out. So I'm going to read to you what, what a psychologist says that is kind of excusing this behavior. Although you and I find it shocking 
but apparently we're not supposed to be shocked, right? So the Woodford County State Attorney, Greg Minger, Greg Minger filed charges, uh, Woodford County, Illinois, filed charges today against this child who burned the house down in the Timberline Trailer Court in Godfrey, in Goodfield, Illinois, right? He fit, the child faces five counts of first degree murder, two counts of arson, and one count of aggravated or arson. Like I told you, that means that he knew people were in the home when he started the fire, right? The child will be appointed an attorney and have a bench trial in front of a judge. So they're not giving him a jury trial because most jurors are going to say, lock him away and throw the key away for good and don't let him out after 21. Because this is what is breeding this environment of killers. If, you, if you're going to tell a child that, yeah, you can burn the house down and kill all your family members, but you're not going to get treated for it. You're not going to get killed for it. You're not going to get punished for it then that's telling all children that it's okay to be bad and it's okay to do what they do. This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. They need to put this child away. If this were a black child, what do you think they would do with him? They would lock him up and throw away the key. If this were a Hispanic child or any child, if he were a brown child or a Muslim child, he would be labeled a terrorist. If he, was, if he were Hispanic, he would be labeled what? A full of hate. And if he were black, he'd just be criminalized. But they don't want to criminalize, criminalize someone who is obviously intentionally criminal. Unbelievable. Now, if he's convicted, the child faces a maximum of five years probation, but he will get out at 21. And he's not going to face any jail time, but they recommend counseling and therap therapy. The same thing they recommend for mass shooters who just walked into a church and killed nine people, right? The same thing they recommended, they will recommend for every mass shooter who walks into a school and shoots people up or shoots up a theater. They just need counseling and therapy that will bring them back to normal. Now, listen to this. This is what the, the Woodford County attorney says. It's a heavy decision. It's a tragedy. But at the end of the day, it's charging a very young person with one of the most serious crimes we have. But I just think it needs to be done at this point for finality. Are you kidding me? So, so hold on. It gets better. It's get, it gets better. I could read to you the people whom he killed. He killed a 69-year-old woman, a 34-year-old man, a 2-year-old, a 2-year-old, and a 1-year-old. All the victims died as a result of smoke inhalation. And their deaths are all homicides. Oh, my God. The fire was started intentionally. Now listen to this. Betsy Clark, founder and president of the Illinois-based Juvenile Justice in Initiative, that the prosecutor's decision to charge the nine-year-old is shocking. It's shocking to charge him, considering research that suggests kids at that age are not aware of the seriousness of their actions. No kidding. That's why we hold them accountable and teach accountability. It's a shocking decision on the part of the prosecutors and it's out of step with the fundamental, fundamental international human rights protections for children only in America, I swear to you, because in other parts of the world, a nine-year-old does that, they're going to try him. What's particularly shocking about it is the charges filed the same week that the first ever global study on the deprivation of liberty of children was released. The key recommended re recommendation coming from the deprivation of liberty of children, it's a global study, in the rec in, is, is that the minimum age, listen to this, y'all, the minimum age for prosecution of children should be 14. I want to puke. And the reason they say 14 is that all of their brain research shows that children are not capable of understanding and appreciating consequences. That's why we keep ramming it into their heads over and over. Da, neurological studies show that they should not be criminally responsible at an age lower than 14. So the question I want to ask him, the question I want to ask is, if, if the studies are showing he's not criminally responsible, how did he know that it was that if he burned the place down with people in the place, that there wouldn't be, that something is wrong with that. You're telling me that at nine, he doesn't know right from wrong, right? But this is why we continue to teach a child, right? 
we continue to teach a child over and over and reinforce positives and to teach a child. Dr. Jeff Temple, professor and psychologist at the University of Texas Medical Branch and a board member of the Texas Psycho Psychological Association, says that young children do not understand that there are tangible consequences for their actions. No, 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 stop for a minute. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We're not starting over as if this is a new phase in humanity. We do know that young children are not aware of the tangible consequences of their actions. That's why we teach them. That's why it's important when they do something as heinous as burning down a house with five people in it, three of whom were babies, you hold him accountable and you teach him accountability. You don't give him a slap on the wrist because that's what this is amounting to. If you're going to give him five years of probation, that means he's done by the time he's 14. More than likely, they will either seal his juvenile record or expunge it. So you will know that he was a stone cold killer because that's what that is. He's a stone cold killer in the making. Yeah, you can take me to court. What are you going to do? Accuse me of saying that? But think about it. A nine-year-old who burns a house down knowing that there were three babies inside. And you mean to tell me you're going to say that he does not understand uh, uh, understand the tangible consequences for their actions. There is certainly enough that we know about the developing mind in psychology to say that a nine-year-old cannot be responsible for an illegal offense for purposeful murder or intentional kills. This is what Professor Jeff Temple, a professor and psychologist at the University of Texas Medical Branch, a venerable school of medicine, he says that what we do know about the developing mind in psychology is that a nine-year-old cannot be responsible for an illegal offense for purposeful murder or intentional kills. Listen to this. At that age, the mind is not developed enough. Huh? We knew that. That's why we don't make nine-year-olds president of the United States. And we don't make nine-year-olds CEO of companies. At that age, the mind is not developed enough and they're not thinking of consequences. They're impulsive because they watch cartoons where the roadrunner runs off the cliff, falls 500 feet, and is alive in the next scene. Kids don't even watch those kinds of cartoons. Today. They watch cartoons with AR-15 shooting the place up and airing it up. That's what they watch, Professor Temple, just so you know. I should reach out to you and ask you to comment on that because that is just the craziest thing I've ever heard. Professor Temple believes that nine-year-old who allegedly started the, play, the blaze may have done so on purpose, even knowing people could get hurt, but does not understand the permanence of death. Hi, I want to stop there because I want to know where in this diatribe, in this dialogue, is this child going to be held accountable for what he did? And listen to this. He keeps on. This Professor Temple person, he keeps going on. He says kids do stupid things all the time and don't really think about the consequences. Are you kidding me? Like, seriously? That's why they jump off a cliff, jump over a wall, right? That's why they have parents who guide them. And that's why we have systems in place that do what? That stops them before it gets any further. I cannot believe that you actually believe this. Kids do stupid things all the time and don't really think about the consequences. Unbelievable. It could have been as terrible as this was that he wanted to see what it was like to see something burned down, even if he knew someone was in it. My guess is he doesn't understand the nature of consequences and actions even if he thought someone was going to burn, he probably didn't have that sense of permanence to know they weren't going to come back and that they were going to be dead and gone forever. Hallelujah. I need to stop right there. The reason I say that I need to stop is because nowhere in this is it holding this child accountable. I want to know if this were a black child or a brown child, would you say the same research covers their actions? And this is, the, this is the part that made me smile. He said, I don't believe we can hold someone who still believes in the Easter Bunny 
and accuse them of having the intent of murdering someone when they don't even know the meaning of what death really is. I still believe in the Easter Bunny, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and burn a house down with babies inside of it. Are you listening, folks? Are you listening? Does this make sense to you? I just want to know. I just want to know. I I mean, this is mind-blowing and mind-boggling all at the same time. Because I want to know, why do they think? Why on God's green earth do they think that this nine-year-old child who burnt a house down with three babies, two were two and one was one, right? A 69-year-old and a 34-year-old intentionally set the blaze so they died of smoke inhalation. I just want to see the investigation because if what if he blocked their exit so they couldn't get out? So he was standing from afar watching the place burn down and you still think this is a normal child? He's not living with me? Right now, the child is in the care of his uh, grand- grandparents. He would not be living nowhere near me. What is he going to do next? Light the grandparents' house afire? I would not have him nowhere, anywhere near me, y'all. That's just me. And that's just me being me. Because I'm wondering, at what point are we... What age do you... They think we should start holding people accountable at 14. So your 12-year-old goes out and have sex and come back pregnant. You shouldn't hold her accountable? You should give her a slap on the wrist and tell her, Oh, you didn't know that having sex was going to make you pregnant. So your 12-year-old goes out and drinks and gets alcohol poisoning. Don't hold him accountable either. For goodness sakes, you wake up one morning and your 12-year-old is standing over you with a knife to stab you. Don't hold him or her accountable. This just makes me scared of children. I am so glad mine are grown adults who understand the consequences of their actions. Like I will kill them if I get up, right? (laughs) That's the consequence they need to fear. I am saying that, and his mother, when interviewed, says he's not a monster. He deserves to have a second chance. Yeah, a second chance to go burn down another house with you in it. That's the second chance you want to give him. No, I don't think so. I think he should be locked away for life. I don't think that anybody, you can't tell me that that is normal. I grew up with, I grew up with people around me. And children have always been fascinated by fire. But from an early age, they knew that someone could not be burnt in the fire. Matter of fact, I am troubled by anybody who sets a child who starts setting fires intentionally. If they're, sometimes they're engineers early, so they're doing it so they can, you know, get, uh, get, uh, what do you call it? Get, uh, get, uh, uh, you know, get a reaction out of it. So they're observing it but not if people are involved. You don't set a fire with five people in there, including babies, knowing that a baby, a one-year-old and a two-year-old can't get out on their own. What is going on in our homes? That's really the question. The question really is what is going on in our homes that we are imparting to children and we are ruining them before they even start? It makes you start wondering what is going on. What kind of foods are we eating when we're pregnant? Uh, What do we tell the children after they're born? What on earth is going on? That's really, really the issue here. That's the real issue. And that's something that we need to pay attention to. For me, that's the real cookie crumbler right there. What on earth is going on? And I say that with all equanimity because I feel like we're not talking enough. And, 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 and what, we, what we're doing is failing to hold people accountable. So we're like, okay, little Johnny, you know, just a slap on the wrist. You're a bad boy, little Johnny. Look at you, little Johnny. You're such a bad, bad boy. But this is shocking. It's five counts of murder. By the way, this happened from April, but they kept it on their lids because apparently they didn't want to talk about it because it's a little boy and they want to protect his name and so on. What has happened to him since then? 
where has he gone to therapy? Does he understand now the consequences that when you burn a house down and people are in it, they're not going to come back? Does he understand that now? I just, inquiring minds want to know, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just want to know. I just want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. And this is a dangerous trend because like I read to you in, in 2018, 62 juveniles in the U S under the age of 15 were charged with murder and non-negligent manslaughter. That's an alarming number of children. Why were 62 children aware that they killed somebody under the age of 15? Now, in some of these situations, I don't know all of them. It could be that some of these were children were defending themselves against aggressive adults, in which case, yeah, they know enough to defend themselves. Good for them. But if you intentionally kill someone, and even if the person was uh, intentionally hurting you, but at the moment when you kill them, you were they weren't hurting you, but over a lifetime of it, that's still something that you, you have to look into. That's still something to look at and, and to examine and to see, well, what do we need to do coming out of this? Because this is crazy stuff. This is crazy stuff. This is crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. I, I am so shocked that I don't even know what to do myself. I don't even know what to do myself. I don't know what to say, what to do. I don't know because I can't, I don't know of any children in my experience or immediately around me who have these tendencies. And it, it, it starts to make you think whether we cultivate an environment in which these children thrive, these kinds of behaviors thrive. Do we intentionally cultivate these kinds of environments? Do you see what I mean? Do we intentionally uh, create episodes and create situations where children have these 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 behaviors will thrive in and proliferate. How do how does this happen? Do we create the environments? Are we constantly talking about killing people, murdering people around children? Are we constantly suggesting ways in which we can do this around children without thinking of the scope and without thinking of the impact it will have on them? Are we holding children accountable from their born? Because it seems to me that most people think that, oh, well, you should really start teaching them stuff like this when they turn 14, but you're not teaching it to them before. Something to think about. Think about that. Are we teaching them before? Are we telling them from their born? I found in my experience that when, when I was having children, when my children were much younger, when they were just born, I used to walk around with them as soon as they became aware of the environment and they knew who mommy was and who daddy is. I used to walk around with them and tell them, don't touch the fire, don't touch the stove. And I would pat them on their hands and tell them, if you do that, mommy's going to be mad and mommy's going to spank you. Don't do it. I guess what they're going to do, come after me now and call me child abuser for teaching children right and wrong. Well, that's your problem. That's why you have nine-year-olds who are burning houses down and I don't. There's a distinct difference because my children are raised with a sense of accountability. I have no, uh, I can tell you with all assuredness, my children would never burn a house down with, with five adults in it, with five people in it. They would never do that. And they wouldn't have done that when they were nine, five, four, three, two, one, and not know at the age where they are. They would not, they would not have done that because they were not raised in an environment that promoted that kind of thing. And this is why I'm saying, what kind of environment are these children in? Are they raised in an environment of violence? Are they raised in an environment where violence against others is promoted? Is there violence in the home that makes these children angry so much so that they want to take it out on someone else? These are the questions. And these are relevant questions that are relevant to the issue of what takes place in a child's home for him at nine years old to decide that burning the house down 
with five people in it whom he's related to, by the way. So even if, you know, he was mad at the 69-year-old person and the 34-year-old person, was he mad at the three babies? What did they do to him? A two-year-old and a one-year-old. I don't think he should get away with it. I don't think that he should have a vacated sentence or he should just be... What is counseling and therapy going to do? Can I just help you out? In the last 50 years, they're saying counseling and therapy didn't help anybody when it comes to these things. Counseling and therapy can only go so far. The individual has a free agency in that they want to get better. It only works if you want to get better. It's just like taking the 12-step program at Alcoholics Anonymous. If you go to AA, any AA program, any addicts, addicts program, taking the 12 steps works only if you want to get better. Yes, you have a predilection to, to taking drugs. Yes, you may have a predilection to, you, you have an issue with drugs. You have a, a, a date with drugs. You have a date with alcohol. But if your desire to get better is stronger than your desire for the drugs, it might work. And what they're trying to tell us is that these children don't know the consequences, which means they don't have a desire. So if you don't teach them the consequences, how will they know that they should have a desire to be good? And for his mother to say he's not a monster, I wanted to shake her up. Like, are you in shock? Are you traumatized? Are you aware that your nine-year-old son burnt a house down with five family members in it? I just want to ask her, do, would you take your son home at that point? Because he's not living with the mother. They didn't tell us what the circumstances were, why he's not living with the mother, only that he's living with the grandparents. I know he wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even want to be in the same courtroom with him. I'd be scared of him if it were my kid. These are the issues. This is the crazy, one of the craziest stories. I have ever heard. My friends, we've got a problem, <laughs> right? Now, they're saying that this happened in Illinois, and Illinois uh, opened the first juvenile court in 1899, and that Illinois led the world in protection for children. And now we're so far behind because history has proven that children do terrible things. And now they're saying is the mind, sorry, is not developed at 14. Then at what age is the mind developed? Right? I, 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 I accede to that because I think children are not emotionally mature, so they're not able to make emotional decisions at a certain age. I agree with that. Right? But at the same time, I want to know, inquiring minds want to know, what do you do? What happens? Now, this case is, is we probably are going to hear more of it, right? Uh, we probably are going to, to, to hear uh, where this is and, and, and what's going on, right? But <laughs> this one takes the cake. This one just totally blew me away. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It blew me completely away right? It completely blew me away. I don't know. I think, I think we have some real issues here and we probably need to look into why a nine-year-old boy burned a house down with family members in it. And now his mom says he's not a monster. The issue is not whether he's a monster. The issue is that did he know that there were people in it and that if he burnt the house, with people in it that people would die. And what they're saying is that he was aware of it. So he intentionally committed five murders. That's five counts of murder. 